Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Adewali Yusuf. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to dynamically hide item in a dimension slicer based on your facts table. And a lot of people have been having these issues and people do this a lot of manual approach. And I'm going to show you how to actually automate this without doing it manually, right? So I'm going to show my table view. So you see the table that I have inside this uh, Power BI. So here I have a dimension and a fact table. So this dimension basically contains the list of all the states and then region and also all the stores under this region, right? But if you look at my fact table, I have the fact table which shows the sales across different um, uh, stores and different regions as well. So I just use this store basically to connect to my uh, location dimension so that I can actually get the market and also the store, right? But if I go to my reports right here, in my fact table, I only have this market available. I think I ran the, let's say, 10 or 11 market available, right? But my market coming from my dimension table, it's showing practically all the market that we have um, in this particular region or in all the region, right? So that is why when I select some of the slides out here, some of them work, some of them doesn't. So when I select Abia, because Abia is part of my fact table. You can see that I can see, see some number. Anamawa is also part of my table. What if, but what if I select by yes, I right? Then you see that all my dashboard will entirely be blank. And that is because by yes, sir, it's not part of my fact table. And if you come to store here as well, these are all list of all the stores in by yes, sir. And when I click all of them, you see that they also don't have any data here, right? Because this is not in my fact table yet. So what most people do when user complain about this, because I know a lot of users have complained about this, saying that there are some locations that are showing that we don't currently have in our fact table. How can we get rid of that and concentrate on the locations that we have available only, right? Now, what most people do is they go to the filter options right here and some people kind of come here and they filter one by one to say, okay, uh, BI is available, Bayesa is not available, um, or your federal capital territory is not available, uh, Ogun is not available, Ondo is not available. So most people do this most of the time and then the limitations to this is now when these new locations are, are now available in the data set or in the facts table, you need to come back to Power BI and clean this out or probably add the new locations to this. And this does not really make sense. So let me show you how to dynamically filter this your dimension table based on your fact table with DAX, right? DAX, you heard me right? DAX, right? Now let's try something interesting here and I'm going to show you how that is possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my fact table and just do a new measure and let's write a very basic and simple measure. This is a nice trick. You're going to love it. We're going to write a very basic and simple measure, right? And I'm going to call this measure probably, uh, let's call it um, slicer filter or something or dimension uh, filter. That's what I'm going to call it basically. So let me zoom this so you can see my tags very well. So I'm going to call it um, slicer filter or dimension filter, really, anything you like to call it. So let me just say dim filter, right? Dim filter. And here I'm going to write a very simple calculation that says if, right, the distance count, I'm going to count a distance count of uh, something inside the fact table. It can be like an ID. It can be probably something that is repeated a lot of times. So just make sure you count something inside the, the, the fact table. So I'm going to count the store. Right, since store is like the lowest granularity I have in my fact table, so I'm going to count store to say I want to count distant count of the store. If the distant count of the store is greater than, now I'm going to add the conditions to say if the distant count of a store is greater than zero, right, then I want you to return one. S, I want you to return zero. Now, this logic is very simple. What I'm basically saying is that count the list of all the stores that I have in my fact table. If they are greater than zero, which means if I have 10, 20, 50, uh, 100, then you should return one. If not, if it's not greater than zero, then it should return zero. So what that means is don't practically return anything, just zero, right? Now, that condition is what we're going to add to our slicers. So I'm going to go to my slicer, right? Now I'm going to go to my slicer right now. And for my slicer, I'll go to the filter pane here, filter pane here. And I'm going to add my new measure into the filter pane, right? The new measure that I just wrote, I'm going to add it into the filter pane. Remember, I, I called it dim filter. 
So I'm going to add it here. Now, once I have it here, what I'm basically going to say is, if this dim filter is greater than zero, right? It's greater than zero. So what I'm saying is, I want to see, let me apply this. I want to see all the things in my dimension when the unique of the lowest granularity in my fact table is greater than zero, right? Now, and you will see that automatically it has filtered out some items. So basically, by yes, I is not here anymore. Some other interesting stuff is not here anymore. So let me clear this and do this again so you can understand what I'm saying. Now, before, you can see that I have a yo, I have a soon, I have a do, right? Now, I'm saying that if this is greater than zero, just the condition is greater than zero, apply, then you will see that it has filtered out all those items that are not present in my factable. And that's an amazing trick, right? Let me apply that to my store as well. So inside the store, I have various stores here. I have uh, Adobe Kitty, even though some, some locations are not available in there. So once I come here, add this to my store, and I say this is greater than what? Uh, zero. And I click apply. Once I do that, it's going to filter out all the stores that are really not related, right? So there's no store I will click here right now that is not present in my fact table. All of them are present in my fact table, right? So all of them are present in my fact table. And that is the interesting trick about this. Now, if a new market is available, probably in your fact table at the end of the day, you don't need to come back to Power BI to amend anything. The new market is going to flow in automatically. Let's say, for example, I'm adding uh, two new markets. Let's so I'm basically going to add Oyo and Bayesa, not Hogun. I mean, Bayesa into this data set. And let's see how this is going to update. So in my data set, I've just added um, Oyo and Bayesa right now. And I'm going to refresh this report. And let's see if Oyo and Bayesa flowing into this market, right? So let me click on... Um, refresh let me just refresh this and let's see if this actually flow in uh, based on the new addition then right here you can see bayesa here you can see i can also see bayesa right now and i can also see your your here so when i select or your uh or your is basically going to be part of my data set and i have some numbers for you this is how to dynamically filter your dimension based on your fact table make sure you subscribe to this channel and also like this video and put a comment so that i can keep dropping interesting videos and tricks like this thank you